What are the main sources of governmental benefits to help pay for long-term care expenses? Well, the principal sources are generally either Medicaid or VA benefits. Medicaid is um, a government benefit. It's a federal program, but it's administered by the states. Varies considerably from state to state. And in Florida, there are different impacts um, depending upon where the senior is on the continuum of care. Um, most of the time when we say Medicaid, we're talking about nursing home Medicaid. And basically, the way that works is if once the senior is qualified for Medicaid, and there are level of care requirements, um, income requirements, and asset requirements, once the senior is qualified for skilled nursing home Medicaid, then the general paradigm is that their income goes to the nursing home and the government then pays the rest of the bill. Uh, there are lesser benefits in lower levels of care like assisted living and home health care. Also on the lower levels of care there are waiting lists. From the VA standpoint, the VA is obviously um, a very complicated bureaucracy. It's probably one of the second biggest bureaucracy in the country. And there are a bunch of different types of VA benefits. Um, a lot of times we look at uh, the VA oversimplified in three divisions. There's compensation, the healthcare system, and then VA and uh, then pension benefits. Uh, the healthcare system is real good for all veterans to register for that. Uh, there may be some financial strata in there that will vary the uh, benefits depending upon. Uh, your assets and income, but generally uh, it's a good idea to register for the VA healthcare system. Um, actually, one thing to keep in mind about all three of these is in addition to resources available from the VA, every county in Florida has a VSO, which is a veteran services officer and their county employees that help the veteran deal with veteran benefits. and. Uh, you know, it's always fine to go see the VSO and see if you qualify or not. Uh, the benefits we're talking about, we're helping people who don't otherwise qualify. We don't want to charge somebody that is already qualified and can get their benefits. Looking at the compensation side, that is compensation for service-connected disabilities. So you have to have some kind of a connection with something that happened to you and your service. And most of the seniors we talk to don't have a service connection with the disabilities they're discovering. Uh, but basically, uh, if they do, they are awarded compensation in respect to that disability. And it's on a percentage basis. You know, it can be, there are some advantages even of a 0% disability rating, but it can be 10, 20, 30, 70, 100 percent disability. We don't at this time do a whole lot of work in the compensation area, but we have a number of referrals that we can give for that. We deal mostly in the pension area, and this is sometimes referred to as low income, low asset, improved wartime pension. And basically, if a veteran has 90 days of active duty, any one day of which was during a declared wartime period, uh, and those are fairly well known and we have other resources on our website that give the dates of qualification for that. Uh, then they're eligible from a service standpoint, but what the government is saying there is if you did serve during time of war, and uh, note that you don't have to actually have been in the theater of war, you just have to be in the military during that time. Then, if your assets and income get down to a certain level, the government will give you a supplement to get you back up to the maximum pension rate. And this year, for example, the maximum pension rate for a married veteran uh, or a veteran with dependent is uh, twenty eighty-five per month, and that can be a great supplement to help a veteran pay for assisted living or home health care. Generally, um, a lot of veterans that think about this benefit may go into the VSO and the first question might be, what is your income? 
and you know if your income's over 2058 the first thing that's going to happen is you're not qualified but one of the keys is if your income reduced by unreimbursed medical expenses is below the maximum pension rate then the government can pay a benefit to get you up to the maximum pension rate uh, so that's a great uh, benefit for veterans who are starting to experience long-term care expenses. And those are the two principal sources.